Hi everyone, this is Fresher from Labwine and we're bringing REQ version 2 to the rack. REQ version 2 has new controls as well as some of the original controls from version 1. Where version 1 you just had the 31 fader handles and the high pass and low pass controls, the wet dry mix and the output gain plus the mode selector, the patch loader and basic metering you now have additional controls which include the input gain a blend and EQ curve control shift frequencies control and a gain dry control which is similar to the gain dry function that we've got in Battleax on top of that as I just said we've got edit curve A and B which means you've got two memory banks of EQ curve shaping you've also got a copy to opposing bank control as well as a reset current edited bank this means that you can now finally draw your EQ curves you can copy them over to the opposing bank edit your secondary EQ curve and you can also blend between the two EQ curves you can shift the frequencies of the center of all the EQ faders you can reset individual bands you can turn off the blend so you can snap between two EQ curves and the darker handle shows you the active curve in play while well, you can edit and you can actually obviously see the opposing EQ curve in the background so we find this all very handy editing for EQ in now additionally you've got new metering which shows the left and right input and output meters independently of each other this makes it a lot easier to see which channel could be causing you uh, problems when you're EQ boosting or cutting you can decide which way you want to process you can boost the signal you can actually see the initial input level opposed to the output level post EQ post filters post output gain so you've got a lot more control in this version if I flip around the back you have the input and output audio sockets you additionally have hear EQ sockets and this is independent from the hear EQ function on the front hear EQ function when you turn this on this will only go through the output sockets regardless whether hear EQ is on or off hear EQ will pipe from the audio outputs here so you can add additional processing if you so wish additionally on the back we've got more CV controls than before we've got your input and output gain a blend control CV ins for low pass frequency high pass frequency wet mix and your shift frequency control all have invert CV signal and also turn the CV signal to bi or unipolar modes 31 bands still have CV inputs as well as the CV controls for invert and bi uni CV modes as the red and blue show copied from version 1 but now you have yellow and green for EQ bank B as well as a CV routing option so you can choose which EQ bands and banks are affected by the CV signal so you can choose to route the CV in to bank A only banks A and B and bank B all independently I'll quickly run the loop through this Apache loop that we've got so 
is very recognisable. Drum loop. And we'll do a demonstration of the EQ curving and blending. And how we would possibly EQ a signal. So you can see on this plot, we've got quite a lot of low end drum boom. So first thing, we'll put a high pass on there to carve some of that out. When we use the wet dry mix, we can hear that the low end's lost a little bit of impact. But of course, we don't want to go too crazy on the low end because it'll eat our head trim. where we can make decisions and this is where here EQ comes into its own so we can hear which part of the band of the signal the bands best work with So the 50 hertz is, you can't really hear anything, 40 is too low, 63 is not bad, 70 seems better, and 89, 90 sounds quite good as well. You can hear that initial sort of punch through now. 100 sounds a little bit too high up. So we know the low end for boosting the kick back in. And as you can see, to the low end, we're going to pick that fraction more so we can curve it back. So, where we have the dry signals taking up quite a lot of headroom, we've actually carved a bit out and we've cut out the low end, we've managed to put it back into the high end. It's a lot of addition and subtraction with EQ. around the 320 you can hear the bongo itself so 315 and we hear third octaves remember we're in here EQ mode so that'll add to it. So when we've got that sound, it's kind of, a, to me, it's a little bit flat. It's a little bit, a bit more pronounced now. Now, because we haven't done anything with EQ curve B, it's flat. That's basically like a dry signal. Rebalance it. And I've discreetly EQ'd it. Only a fraction, but it could be enough to make it sound that little bit better and a little bit more controlled so you can get better headroom, more space in your mix. Now, some of the other functions we've done with version 2 is the it's related to the modes you can actually select the mode and the color will change in accordance to that active mode the reason for this is because at distance you could actually see what is being processed by the EQ at that time if you were trying to look for a mid or a side processing signal if for example 
iron it in another REQ straight after it the green one I can see is boosting the mids well now I'm EQing the stereo signal in the red but I'm only looking at the colour so I know this is a stereo EQ this is a mid EQ just makes things a little bit easier a little, little bit quicker to look at okay with regards to the copying and resetting of the bands you can copy from the edited curve to the opposite curve whenever you change to the curve you want to edit the buttons automatically update to tell you what you're going to be doing obviously if I'm on edit curve B and I copy to A it's going to copy over this EQ curve to memory slot A or I be, will press reset B would obviously flatten off the current and as you can see where I've got edit curve A reset EQ A updates to B also updates to reset individual bands you can literally drag over or click any of the frequency numbers or the DV levels so you can click and drag to reset individual handles if you feel you needed to all this is also undoable so it's just a lot easier to edit EQ curves and you're only using one mouse click so we find that's a lot easier you can then you've got your other hand free you can play keys or or play instruments whatever, while you're EQing as well so this is quite a handy control setup something else that we added in as well which a lot of users were asking for was the DB values for the handles version 1 was quite difficult to do it was all based on percentages in the sequencer you still get all your percentages for the handles but on the actual display the displays will update in accordance to the mode as well if for example we're in obviously stereo mode 12 dB you can see the maximum is 12 minimum is minus 12 if you change that to 24 obviously the handles will update automatically for you and so you can see the values in between now all these failure controls for EQ curve A and B in fact pretty much all the controls on REQ on the front excluding the mode selector and also excluding the EQ curve A and B is MIDI automate, automatable automatable which means you can now control from an external source a lot easier all your EQ faders you can actually grab it uh, with control surfaces to make life that little bit easier again so that's quite handy development since version 1 as well ok this has been Fresher from Love 1 well, thanks for watching this video demo of our new version of REQ131 and we hope that you'll be able to use this version even more than before in your current projects and new projects working forward thanks for watching